people will come to pick up these bags as the Thanksgiving dinner. So thanks to each of you who participated in this marvelous project to help defeat those who are in need. So let's pray for the Thanksgiving bags. God, we praise you and thank you for all the ways in which you meet our every need. God, thank you for the privilege of being able to participate by giving a bag or a bag or two which we know will go to help those who are in need. And God, tomorrow bless each family who will receive this gift of food. And we pray your rich blessing to be with them as they celebrate the Thanksgiving holiday. And God, continue we pray to bless our church as we reach out in so many different ways to help those who are less fortunate than we. We give you thanks for all things through Christ. If you didn't notice when you came in, there's also a tree in the back called the Angel Tree. So if you want to help in that mission project, please do so as you leave the sanctuary this morning. And if I celebrate a birthday this coming week, I don't see anybody confessing to that. <laughs> what about an anniversary celebration? Am I celebrating an anniversary? All right, happy anniversary. How many years are we celebrating? How many years? <laughs> happy anniversary, anybody else? Well, I'm missing anybody. Think I'm missing happy anniversary? <laughs>
my name is Lou Ann Trommel. Welcome to God's house. I really wasn't in a big hurry, but <laughs> you know. <laughs> thank, thank the Lord that we have Bob here to help. <laughs> please let's pray. Almighty God, please make us loyal followers of our Savior, Jesus Christ, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Enable us to hear his word, follow his teachings, and live in his spirit. Hasten the day when every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen.
<laughs> and your turn after the, the, the prayer. Yes. Okay. Yes. See, when you get old, it's hard to stay on the right page. So, so. Sometimes you're hearing God's house. It's always a blessing to be able to pray. And know that God hears, that God listens, and that God will answer in God's own time, God's own way. To get our prayer, let's first of all be silent and let you offer your silent prayers to God about those persons whom you know need God's touch right now. Let us pray. Holy One, Almighty God, we are your people. We're here to worship you with gladness. We come into your presence with a song in our hearts. God, we long for that day, post-COVID-19, we can sing loudly and jubilantly our praise and our thanks. God, you are good. Your steadfast love endures forever. Your faithfulness has been available in all generations. God, we each of us seek to know you better. Open our hearts to recognize your presence, to receive you fully, and to be ready to follow you wherever you lead us. Enable us, O oh God, to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to welcome the stranger, and to assist in healing the sick. Open our eyes to see you in every person we meet. As we celebrate Christ and King Sunday and the end of this Christian year, enable us to accept and to welcome Jesus Christ as King of our hearts and King of our lives. In the midst of this bleak, difficult, challenging time, we are still richly blessed. Our Father, we have so much for which to give you praise and thanks. As we approach another Thanksgiving season, enable us to celebrate safely with our families, always aware that COVID-19 is always a serious threat, a threat to us and a threat to others. God, be with all persons who we know that are really facing a difficult time. Trust them with your grace and with your peace. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I know there was something new today. When the, when the hand bells, put one of the bells on the table, it's called an echo. All right. <laughs> See, a neat technique. I like that. It sounds good. Welcome back.
I think it's my turn now. <laughs> Good morning, my name is Jim Trump. Please hear now the gospel text for the day from Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. The sheep and the goats. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. And the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you, a stranger, invite, and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to see, visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of my brothers and sisters, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or needing clothes, or sick, or in prison, and did not help you? He will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. And they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We will now have hymn number 138, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is, verses 1 through 4.
backseat of a car eating an apple. That is in Matthew. Why is my apple turning brown? Matthew's father explains. Well, Matthew, after you ate the skin off, the meat of the apple came in contact with the air. The air then caused the apple to oxidize. It changed the apple molecular structure and turned the apple into a different color. There's a long silence. Then Matthew asked softly, Daddy, are you talking to me? <laughs> it's always a challenge to communicate. Many, many times I am like a four-year-old and just do not understand what's going on around me. It's similar to the gospel text for today about goats and sheep. In Jesus' parable, goats are bad. Sheep are good. I don't like thinking about goats being bad. I grew up on a farm outside Bridgeville, Delaware. Our farm was very similar to old McDonald's farm. We had chickens, ducks, pigs, cows, a goat, lots of cats, a couple of dogs, and a horse. Now back to the goat we had. His name was Billy. I know we weren't very creative in giving him a name. But Billy became my buddy. We would play together in the backyard. I would push against Billy's forehead, and he would push back. We had a little confidence as who could push harder. As Billy grew older, he won the contest more frequently. Billy also liked to gently butt you in your butt. No, it didn't hurt. It was funny. It was cute. I enjoyed Billy the goat. And because of this experience, I still like goats. I saw a report on the TV news not long ago about a herd of goats being released into a cemetery. Why? They were there for cleanup duty. They were there to eat all the brush and all the shrubs that had overgrown the cemetery. And the report said the goats did a very good job cleaning up. But I'm still confronted with Jesus' parable. It's interesting for us to notice that cattle, sheep, and goats could all be offered as a burnt offering, provided each animal was without blemish. There's also historical evidence that goats and sheep were often kept in commingled herds. They were separated at times of shearing or for safety or for valuing the herd. In Jesus' description, it's very evident from the very outset that the sheep find more favor in the eyes of the reigning king than do the goats. The sheep were gathered on the right, the traditional place of honor and preference. In the Christian church, today is Christ the King Sunday, established in 1925 by Pope Pius XI. Christ the King Sunday is the very last Sunday in our Christian liturgical calendar. Next Sunday is the first Sunday in Advent, and we'll start a brand new Christian year. Today, we celebrate Jesus being king, king of the universe, king of all things. What's it mean to say that Jesus Christ is king, king of our world today? Pastor and writer King Duncan reminds us this is an unfinished world. Now this world is certainly not the kind of world Jesus Christ desires. If truly Christ is king, there's a lot of unfinished business. George Bernard Shaw wrote, If the other planets are inhabited, they must be using the earth as an insane asylum. Oh, not a good assessment 
of you and me on this planet Earth. The world is unfinished. If Christ is king, there's still a lot of unfinished things to do because this world is made of the people. And we people are definitely unfinished. We're not complete. We are still in process. There's much for you and me to do to help this world become the kingdom Jesus Christ wants. When I was in school, college and seminary, I never liked exams. I especially did not like final exams. Most final exams were weighted. It would determine your particular grade for that particular class or course. The final exam was a judgment, an assessment of what I had learned or not learned. In the Gospel text, in Matthew 25, a shepherd divides, separate, separates the sheep from the goats. The sheep are on the right and allow entrance into the kingdom. The goats are on the left, not allowed to go into the kingdom. They went somewhere else. Most of the articles and commentaries to which I refer are in agreement. This parable teaches that we're to see every person as though he or she is Jesus Christ. The parable asks this question, Lord, when do we feed you? When do we clothe you? When do we give you a drink? When do we visit you? And the answer comes back. When you did any of those things for the least of these sisters and brothers of mine, you were doing it to me and for me. We never know when Jesus is in front of us. It's hard for me to determine who is Jesus and who is a crook, a con artist. Kay and I ran over a few weeks ago. We were stopped at a traffic signal. A man in the median had a cardboard sign stating he needed help. I've read a lot of articles, and I've seen some TV reports telling about how a lot of these people are con artists. They're crooks. Was the person I saw in the median Jesus or the opposite? I don't know. The light changed, and the man was left behind. I recall very vividly an experience in my very first appointment as pastor. I was in Magnolia, Delaware. Had been there very long. A man came to the church office telling me about a big problem he had. I don't recall the details, but it was a very sad, heart-wrenching story. He needed $77.22. Well, that's not the exact amount, but I do remember it was less than a hundred, and it did have some sense on the end of it. I telephoned the church treasurer and explained what was going on, and I said, I really think this man is legitimate and has a very serious need. The church treasurer brought me a check payable to this individual. The man thanked me profusely for the gift and told me he would see me in church very soon. Well, the very next week, I got a call from the conference office explaining there's a con artist making his way throughout the churches in the Dover area. Many churches have already been caught in this man's con. My church, I, were part of that group that had been tricked. I really felt bad. I apologized to the church treasurer. I apologized at the very next administrative board meeting. Ever since that experience, my ministry has been affected. I've been extra cautious, more skeptical, sometimes even cynical. It's hard to determine what case is genuine and what case is not. Many times, all we can do is the very best we can, and we offer the gift in Jesus' name. 
So who is Jesus Christ? The parable teaches every woman, every man we see. Perhaps the primary teaching from today's parable is this. Kindness will affect our standing in God's kingdom. We're going to be judged on our simple acts of kindness. In this parable, Jesus, who is king, allows entrance into his kingdom, not because some folks had some special affiliation with the denomination, or had great fame, or a lot of money, or some other kind of credentials that we might list in our obituaries. In the final judgment, kindness becomes a very important criterion, a very important measure. Did we help feed those who are hungry? Yeah, we're going to do that. And the shepherds, no, nope. couldn't find that word. Thank you. Does that all the time with, with clothing and providing uh, food and providing emergency assistance. We do help in these kind of situations. It's always our task to help take care of one another. I'm going to date myself, but you already know I'm very old anyhow, so it doesn't matter. But my favorite musical is still The Sound of Music. I love all the songs, and I especially love the, the plot line, the story itself. Baron Von Trapp rules his household with an iron fist. Every time he blows his whistle, the children march out of their rooms and get into formation. All of this changes when Maria, the new governess, arrives. He informs Maria what her whistle signal will be and also informs her that she is to respond promptly when she hears it. Maria quickly informs him she does not respond to whistles. Maria introduces a new mood in the household. Very slowly, the children begin to respond to her, and the house is changed. It's no longer a military barracks. It becomes a home. Kindness brings about the change. The Von Trapp family is changed, it is transformed. Kindness is so important in our world. It's essential, it's necessary. It's also part of our Christian witness. Pastor writer Brett Blair reminds us, this parable suggests, in the end, we're going to be judged not just all the bad things we have done, but also the good things we did not do. Those on the left were denied entrance into the kingdom. Why? Because the king said, I was thirsty. You didn't give me a drink. I was shut in. You didn't come visit me. I was without clothes. You did not give me any. You and I are encouraged. We're expected to use the blessings we have to share with others, to help one another. Now folks, we cannot do everything. All we can do is the best we can. We're judged on the condition of our hearts. One very important thing to remember is this. Jesus is the king. Jesus separates the sheep from the goats. Jesus knows your heart. Jesus knows my heart. Jesus died for each of us. We will enter the kingdom of God because Jesus lives in our hearts. Perfect is not a requirement for entering God's kingdom. What's required is faith in Jesus Christ and acceptance of his forgiveness. I remember a story Aragon focused on the family a long time ago. A fighter jet test pilot was flying in very inclement weather and about to make his instrument landing or an instrument approach back to the airport. 
Air traffic control asked him how much fuel he had, and he answered, plenty. The controller then told the jet fighter pilot about a serious situation. A young pilot was lost and was not instrument rated. He was low on fuel and about to crash. The controller asked the jet airplane pilot to locate this lost airplane and to lead it back to the airport. Quickly, using radar, the fighter jet pilot found the lost airplane. When the lost young pilot looked left when he was instructed to do so, he saw this powerful fighter jet beside him. The young pilot was told over the radio, follow me. When I turn, you turn. Do exactly what I do. The lost pilot followed and led safely back to the earth. You and I are followers of Jesus. At the final judgment, we will simply continue to follow Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ will lead us into his kingdom. Amen. Thank you so much for all the marvelous ways in which you give your offerings to God and God's kingdom through Community Church. It's greatly appreciated. Let us pray. New every morning is your love, great God of life. All day long you're working for good in the world. Use us and our offerings to continue your good work. Let's hear now our closing song, Rejoice, the Lord is King.
and the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, our Savior Jesus Christ. Lead us through this world and into the world to come. Please welcome us, King Jesus, as your faithful sheep into your heavenly kingdom. Amen. Go in God's